Right, so quick video about homemade mould trap. So it's kind of a cross between an old traditional mould trap and some kind of modern elements to it as well. Um, there's a reason why I kind of just made it without showing you. And that is because I wanted to test this spring. Um, if you want me to, I'll make a video of how to make one of these later. And maybe even make a proper traditional one. Or, you know, there's quite a few different variants you can do, so I'm definitely going to do some more. But what it was, was I found something to make a spring out of, and I wanted to try it. So I thought I wanted to make a mole trap as well. So I'll use the spring to make the mole trap. <coughs> and I'll also do a video about this spring, how to make one of these. Because this spring is now made out of the tine of a garden rake. I was just stood in the garage and I looked up and I saw a rake, a damaged rake. And I thought, I wonder how springy those tines are. So I managed to pull one off, bend it around a tube. And I'll tell you what, they make decent springs. And fairly large springs as well, as you can see. You know, not like those other ones I had from the bicycle spokes. They was quite small. These ones are fairly large springs, so you could make, you know, fairly decent traps out of them. And you could wind it a few more times. It makes the spring slightly smaller, so it doesn't rise as far. Well, th th that depends, but it makes it slightly smaller, but way more, more powerful as well. So it depends on how kind of high you want it. But then you could wind it so this bit is sticking out there and then it will rise high as well. Anyway, so mole trap. So like I said, pretty similar to the traditional ones. This would be what they call a flat top mole trap. So I'll show you. So you've got, oh, and this is pretty much um, the right dimensions because I'd looked on quite a lot of different sources um, and all of them have got near enough the same dimensions you know maybe like half inch difference but this is about the right dimensions for a mole trap so I made the spring out of an um, garden rake tine bent it round a pipe to get the shape um, this is just a piece of wood when I do another video about this, I will definitely do a video about how to make one. I'll tell you all the sizes to this. Um, and I've just, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six holes. Now, normally I didn't put six holes, but I had to put six holes because I've bolted the um, spring down. Which I suppose you could just screw it so you wouldn't need to do another hole. But two holes each side for like your snares, and one in the middle for what they call the mumble stick um, which is the trigger basically and that's your mumble stick there and the reason they called it a mumble stick is because in the old days while people was making or setting the trap they would stick this in their mouth and if they spoke to anyone <laughs> they'd have to mumble so that's why they call it a mumble stick apparently so Oh, and these parts, which I would probably change if I do another one, these are just thin HDPE. They're quite bendy, but that doesn't matter because once this is laid in the um, the moles run, it wouldn't actually matter that they're slightly bendy because it's not really going to move or anything. And these, you know, they're not much. It just keeps it up off the, the bottom. But I'd probably do this next time with something harder. Um, maybe not metal, or maybe just thicker HDP, or you could use Kydex or something, or thin metal. So they're on, and they're the right size. They're about an in, uh, sorry, two inches um, across and down. This is about five inches. Yeah, this is five inches long, and about oh, I think it was two and a half wide, maybe, or just under two and a half wide inches. So, your it's similar to the Ojibwe bird trap trigger, where this knotted piece of string goes through the hole, and this 
goes in there, plugs it and keeps it in place. When it's knocked away, the spring flies up and pulls these nooses up and that will be where the mole is stood in there. Well, you could, well I suppose he's standing or if he lays down in his tunnel. But he'll be in there, he'll knock it away and then that'll come up and get him. Right, I'll set it and then we'll set it off. <clears throat> to set it, you push that down, push your... See the knot come through? And then you plug it with the mumble stick. If it don't go in right, you just switch it around, you know, until it will stay. So that's in there now. See it? So the mole, this would be in its run. So the mole would have to push through that. Then once he's pushed through that, then the trap goes off. <clears throat> While that's in there, you can then adjust these and get your snares in the right place. Now traditionally in the old days, they would have, you know, in the really old days, these would have even been made out of horse hair. And later on, things like brass wire, copper wire. And then I've even seen some people just use um, just like strong string in that. But horse hair was the original one. Now these have basically got to go, if possible, it's better if they go right the way down like this side is and if you can get it touching see how it is there see that one's slightly in the air but only slightly so that would be in the run in that position I might change the camera around slightly oh, so it's a little bit of a better angle anyway so that's in the run now and you kind of see it there and when the mole would push through you would knock the mumble stick away And then up those go like that. And then your mould is caught and killed. I'll set that again and I'll bring it down even further so you can actually see how it would go off. Like I said, it's not too bad to set. Depending on how strong your spring is. But you could probably work out a, a setting device for this as well, to be honest. And the mumble stick, not always, but this one seems to want to go in one way. It worked one way really good, and the other way don't seem to want to work so well. It seems to push itself out. You got to get that in there fairly good as well. should be able to see that better, kind of like a mole's eye view. Like I said, the mole would go in. Oh, and this is the good thing about this trap. Because it's a knot which is held, it doesn't matter which way the mole is travelling from, you can set it off either way. So if it comes this way, whatever way, it would go through the noose. And it's got to push past this, which they naturally will. It'll push past that. I'll see if I can get a good place to hold this. So 
pushed past that and then it gets caught there under this. A pretty easy to make trap, nice and traditional. Um, you know, she used to make these in England all the time. And I've even seen ones, you know, made from all fully, pretty much fully natural materials. And I've also seen some kind of traditional ones made with similar thing to this, you know, semi modern, semi traditional. Some people make them out of, um, call it a gas pipe so they do it fully traditional but use gas pipe instead of um like wood whatever because that was the other thing they would do in the old days they would use wood and um bore out wood wooden tubes and that because this would be a flat top mole trap and you can get full barrel mole traps half barrel mole traps all sorts of different ones but this is a flat top one because obviously it's got a flat top on it um similar to a full barrel mole trap really but i'd say the materials to make it are probably easier to get hold of in my opinion, you know, just a flat piece of wood, any old bits of these. I've seen these, just a bit of bent um, haze or whatever. And you can see how it would work, you know, easily. It's not one of those things where you can't kind of work out whether it would actually work or not. The mould goes in, knocks that away, and he's caught in there. Right, anyway, mole trap. Um, I will do a video about how to make one of these and possibly a few other types. So see if I can do a full barrel, half barrel. I'll never show you how to make a flat top one. Like this and traditional. Um, and I'll also show you how to make this spring. And also, another video coming up. I've been doing a couple of videos about um, foot snares or whatever, or leg snares, and then I've made this, finally. I, I won't do it properly, but I'll just give you a quick glance, so you can see. You'll be able to see that I've made one, but we'll do that on another video, you know, that's a video in itself. Right, oh one last thing, I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm going to do a proper video about it but in the old days they was normally, the mumble stick was traditionally hazel that's not actually hazel, I think that's a bit of um, plum or something to add I need to make round ones as well anyway, yeah, mole trap, I'll do a video later about how to make the spring cheers for watching, I'll see you later